Yeah, I just want to speak to this, and I want to start by saying I want to thank, um, I, I do thank the author here. I thank all my colleagues who reached out to me. I want to particularly thank my colleague who's not in the room, Reggie Jones Sawyer, who over a span of years, Reggie Jones Sawyer has had excellent select committees focused upon disadvantaged youth and their opportunities. Reggie has always included me in those uh, select committees. And I've made a point, if I'm there, I'm there. I'm there for the hearing, I listen to witnesses. Uh, Reggie Jones Sawyer called me on this issue. We most recently were together on the uh, Assembly Select Committee on Ending the School to Prison Pipeline. And I actually have the folio that I got from Reggie Jones Sawyer at that hearing. So I would just say Reggie Jones Sawyer has done a good job <laughs> of reaching out to me over years to kind of bring me along. And so I want to give Reggie a shout out. I appreciate his outreach. So many reached out to me. And um, so I will be an I today, but I sort of want to speak to to share why I'm an I. Um, I've, I've kind of gone through a little bit of an evolution on this, and I heard from my colleague, uh, Chris Holden, and, and I told Chris, you know, Chris, I was here in 1977-78 when we were debating Proposition 13, what became Prop 13, and we were talking about how are we going to provide tax relief to Californians. And what I saw repeatedly in the assembly back in those days, and I mention this because his dad, Nate Holden, was in the Senate in that era, and he was a participant in this debate, was that there was sort of a divide in the assembly, and, and some wanted to give tax relief in a pro rata way, so equal to all. Some wanted something that was more targeted. They ended up passing something more targeted, and that ended up not working out. The voters rejected it. Um, and it has stuck with me that we definitely as an institution need to act in a way on behalf of all Californians. But that was a different issue, a different time. Um, I do think right now we are in a time of, of great economic turmoil. 33 million Americans out of work. We need to have a plan to start responding to that. All of us come from the state's 58 counties, 482 cities. Our cities have lost two and a half billion dollars in revenue in the last two months. This is going to affect quality of life in our homes. I think we in the legislature before this year is done need to grapple with the fact that it's like cancer treatment. Strong medicine which deals with cancer can sometimes have other effects that need remediation. So I sort of feel in this time of downturn the legislature needs to look across a broad economy and say, what are the things we need to do to strengthen California as a whole? But we have time to do that. I think we're starting to get a focus on that. Uh, my colleague, Assemblymember Wood, circulated a letter on cities just recently. I have an op-ed before the B already from last week on this topic. I do think we in the legislature do need to focus on what do we do for the entirety of California? But this measure focuses on a very specific problem of how do we give hope to folks who haven't had hope. And, and to my colleague, uh, Mr. Vopel, the vice chair of this committee, you, you mentioned sort of the faith groups. So I've got two, two ideas to toss out to you for those conversations. One is out of the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 6 and 9. It says, do not grow weary in well-doing. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. I sort of think there's definitely an ethic that we ought to be as lawmakers folks on how do we do good for all people? Let's not grow weary in well-doing. And the other one that came to mind actually reflecting upon this is, is the funny little book in the Old Testament, the book of Jonah. Jonah, who's sent on a mission to go tell some people that they're going to be judged, he does it eventually after a lot of adventure, Maritime adventure, I say, as I look at <laughs> Mr. Vopel over there. Uh -oh. <laughs> but at the very end, he's sitting outside the city, and he's unhappy because he knows God's going to be compassionate. And a plant grows up, shelters him from the heat, then the plant dies, 
And what you really see is this book is about how do you grow compassion. And the, the punchline of the book of Jonah is sometimes we are more compassionate when we've actually experienced some hardship ourselves. Jonah is all about how Jonah had an attitude change, having had a good thing that kind of drifted away. So I definitely feel this is all about taking this quarter of a century issue, setting it before the California voters in a time when all Californians are facing great travail. So in a different type of way, not a theoretical way, they sort of understand what what it feels like when hope seems lost, when turmoil seems looming, and you don't quite know where it's going to go. And I think it is incumbent on us to present this to them as that question, to challenge them to find compassion in their hearts, but also for us as lawmakers to a now and only adjourn of the fall to ask ourselves, what do we do for all other Californians so that we are making progress, helping the cities that deliver quality of life, the law enforcement, you know, people thrown out of jobs who lost their health care in a time of COVID. Can we help them with prepays on their COBRA coverage? There's just a lot of things we can do to touch hope in the next few months. And I actually feel if we believe in this issue, after a quarter century is right, we need to jump on opportunities to do good to all people <coughs> using the tools in our toolkit and uh, do it for all Californians. So I, I thank you, Ms. Weber, for your persistent advocacy in this. And uh, thank you for your presentation here. And I too appreciate the witnesses we've heard from on both sides.